This is a lecture on needs assessment, prepared by Dr. Lemmy and narrated by Jonathan Duxbury. A key reason why information systems fail is that they do not do what people expect. Many say that the system does not meet their needs. A key complaint is that the right information is not available at the right time. Either there is too much information, or the relevant information is not present, or even worse, everything is available, but not when one needs it. Why is it so hard to design systems that meet our needs? No designer sets out to fail. No one sets out to make a system that goes unused. No one wants to waste his time or effort. But many do so, not because they want to, but because it is hard to do otherwise. Meeting employees' information needs is difficult because of several reasons. First, a well-defined set of requirements does not exist. It is a journey with no clear map. There is no standard set of information needs. In fact, organizations value having unique information so that they can make better informed decisions than their competitors. Second, even when a system fits the needs of the organization's leaders, one has a problem that leaders frequently change. The CIO that commissioned the system and told you what it should do may not be around to receive the system from you. The people you start with are not the people you will end up with. Designing the system is difficult because the designer does not have access to the final group of decision makers. Third, needs assessment is difficult because most people are not aware of what information affects them. Some information affects us unconsciously. Other items affect us over time. We may look at some information but not use it. We may appear to be using one piece of information while paying attention to another. It is really confusing what our minds do with information. So in the end, when a system designer asks the employees to tell them what information is needed, it is like the blind leading the blind. Neither one really knows. Clearly, if you do not know where you are going, it is hard to get there. Finally, it is hard to design information systems because one is planning for future decisions and not for now. Most people know what information could have helped them if it was available in the past. But future needs are likely to be different. It is hard to design information systems because we are always planning for the last crisis. It is hard to see the future and know what is needed. Many things make the future different and difficult to anticipate. Business processes are changing, the regulatory environment is changing, and on top of this, the technology itself is changing. A key problem is to distinguish between what employees need versus what they wish for. When you ask employees to specify their information needs, you get a long list of information. But in reality, people are far more selective when the information is available. So how should we assess information needs so that we avoid these pitfalls? One approach is to analyze organizational tasks and see how information is used in these tasks. Often this is done through input or output analysis. This approach does not work well because it does not prepare us for future tasks. Another approach is to ask the decision maker to list their information needs. This approach produces long wish lists that are later ignored. It is not an approach we recommend to you. Still another approach is to derive requirements from the existing systems. This perpetuates existing problems. This again is not something I recommend to you. One approach is to look at strategic goals and concerns. This too does not work well because goals do not describe information needs. It helps to know where the organization is going, but we need a lot more specificity than a set of goals. I recommend to you to assess information needs through five steps. First, a panel of experts identify future decisions and issues that the organization is likely to face. In step two, they would list the information needed within each future decision. Note that we are not asking them to list what information they need in general, but within a particular context. In step three, the analyst creates a taxonomy of information items. The purpose of the taxonomy is to put related pieces of information together so that one can see if there is a need for a piece of information across decisions. In step four, the panel of organizational leaders are asked to prioritize the information needs. 
In the last step, this information is used to develop resource allocation plans for data collection and data storage. There are a number of clear advantages for the proposed method of needs assessment. First and foremost, the approach focuses on future needs and reduces possibility of identifying information no longer needed. Second, it is a decision-driven methodology, which minimizes the potential for collecting data that may not be used. It clarifies the context within which the information may be used. Third, by relying on a group rather than an individual, the approach minimizes the design of the system around idiosyncratic characteristics of a few people. Finally, fourth, by adding external experts to the membership of the group, the methodology emphasizes what organizations ought to need. To illustrate, take this example. We were asked to design an information system for mental health commissioners within different states. The first step was to identify upcoming decisions. We brought together a panel of experts and mental health commissioners to identify upcoming decisions that the commissioners will need to address within a year or two. Six different decisions were identified, three of which are listed here. Next, we asked the panel to identify the information items commissioners may need. They identified 69 different information items, two of which are listed here. It is important to note that these 69 items are not information that these commissioners need in general, but information that they need for the six specific upcoming decisions. Each commissioner rated the relevance of all 69 information items for their six upcoming decisions. They were asked questions such as the following. For each upcoming issue, assign a score between 1 and 7 to each information item reflecting the need for the information. A score of 1 means the information has low priority. A score of 7 means that the information is essential for addressing the issue. Next, the ratings are analyzed to identify four categories of data collection priorities. Essential items are important to most issues. Rapid collection items are important to many issues, but not all. These items need no action right now, but plans to collect the information if the need arise. Periodic collection items include items important on some issues, but not many. Low priority items are ignored, as they are not important on nearly any issue. The classification of information ratings into various categories of data collection is done based on the range and the average of the ratings. If an information item has a high average rating and a small range, then it means that it has been judged to be important on nearly all upcoming decisions and therefore belongs to the essential data collection category. A high average and wide ranges puts the information item into rapid data collection. Items in rapid data collection are not routinely collected. Instead, one plans to collect these items when a need for information becomes more clear. A low average and low range puts the information item into low priority category. This category is usually ignored as the information is not important in most upcoming decisions. The items in the periodic category have a wide range but a low average. These items are important in some but not many decisions. These items are collected when they are needed. Here we see that information item 5, which is focused on the cost of services, is judged to be important in all decisions. We also see that the size and character of the patient population and six other pieces of information are important in most but not all decisions and therefore are judged to belong to the rapid data collection set. Many other items belong to the periodic and ignored data sets. This example has shown you how to use average and range of ratings to decide whether a piece of information is consistently important in upcoming decisions. The take-home lesson is simple. Prepare for the future because the last organizational crisis is already over.